Hello, everybody. Welcome to the CIN webinar, Social Needs Screening and Referral Models. This webinar will cover different organizations' efforts related to implementing social needs assessments, implementing a community resource directory and referral system, and staffing models related to social needs screening and referral programs. My name is Marie Hubbard, and I'm the Project Manager for California Improvement Network, or CIN. For those of you that aren't familiar, CIN is a network of quality improvement leaders focused on innovation in healthcare. CIN is a program funded by the California Healthcare Foundation and administered by Health Force Center at UCSF. A few logistical items before we get started. Everybody is on mute and will remain on mute for the hour. If you would like to ask a question, please use the Q&A function located at the bottom panel of your screen, or you can use the chat box. We'll try to get to as many questions as we can within the hour. This webinar will be recorded. Both the PowerPoint slides and the webinar recording will be shared after the webinar. Now I'd like to introduce our facilitator, Claire Kane, consultant at Redwood Community Health Coalition, who will get us started and introduce our presenters. Thanks so much, Marie, and thanks everyone for joining us today. As Marie said, my name is Claire Kane, and I'm a consultant with the Redwood Community Health Coalition. We've been working really closely with the CIN team, as well as the organizations featured today, to develop in-depth case studies of each group's social needs screening and referral model. So the purpose of today's webinar is really to just give you a high level overview of each organization's work. Then later on, if you wanna dive deeper into their programs, I'd recommend taking a look at the program case studies that are posted on the CIN website. So if we go to the next slide, I'd like to introduce our presenters and extend a big thank you to them for agreeing to share their work today. So we'll start out by hearing from Kristen Kane, Department Administrator at Kaiser Permanente Northwest. Kristen will be discussing their screening tool, your current life situation questionnaire, as well as um, their future project of implementing an online social service resource locator tool across the Kaiser system. She'll be followed by Sonia Tucker, the Chief Quality Officer at La Maestra Community Health Centers. Sonia will be talking about their implementation of the PREPARE tool to screen patients for social needs, as well as some of their internal social service programs that they have on site. CBC IPA will then present on their implementation of Healthify, Elise Cole Grant and Asia Evans will be leading this presentation. And for those who don't know, Healthify is an online community resource directory and referral tool. On the next slide, you'll see our last two presenters from SCAN Health Plan, Magna Lenartowitz and Natalie Wang. They'll be talking about how the health plan has actually incorporated social needs screening questions into the health risk assessment, and also their current progress implementing an online social needs resource directory and referral tool called Amp Bertha. So we've got a bunch of really great presentations to hear from today. After the presentations, we will reserve some time um, for a Q&A session. But before we dive into those, we'd love to get a better understanding of our audience and where you all are when it comes to implementing social needs screening and referral tools. So I think Marie is going to pull up two questions. One, yep, there we go. Oops, no, that's the wrong question, Marie. This is the final question. So the first one is around where is your organization when it comes to systematically screening patients for social needs? And then the second one is related to how does your organization um, actually identify local community services to which patients can be referred? So we're going to take one or two minutes to let the audience chime in. All right, Marie, do you want to post the second poll question? So 
So we'll give you just another minute to respond to this and then we'll share the results. And this will give us just a better understanding of who our audience is today and what they're looking for um, from these presentations. Okay, Marie, are we ready to share the results? Great, so then it looks like many of you have started to work on identifying local community services um, to refer patients to either by working with a vendor or maintaining an internal resource directory. And then what about asking social needs questions in a standard way? Okay, so there is some variation here. About 40% have implemented a standard screening tool. Oh. Huh. Great. Well, I hope that you'll be able to apply what you learned today in your own organizations. Um, and with that being said, I'd like to go ahead and pass this over to Kristen Kane from Kaiser Permanente. Hi, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to share with you the great work that Kaiser Permanente Northwest has undertaken over the past few years to address our members' social needs and the broader social determinants of health. I appreciate this opportunity to be a part of this project with Claire. And my goal today is to give you a sense of where we as a health system started this journey, where KP Northwest is currently at, what our current state is, and where we're going. So through the presentation, I'll highlight three milestones along our journey. Um, if you can go to the next slide. Um, and I'll be able to tell you about the creation of our navigator program within our clinics and our hospitals, the implementation of the Your Current Life Situation the tool that was mentioned, as well as our future state, which is uh, implementation of another tool, of more technology around the social service resource locator. But to give you a broader picture of Kaiser Permanente Northwest, we are an integrated healthcare delivery system and we serve two states, um, Oregon and Southwest Washington, Washington, so not the entire state of Washington, but that Southwest pocket. We have about 640,000 members right now, and we are growing. And um, throughout the two states, we have 34 medical offices and two hospitals. So just to get a, a picture of the, the scope of our, our footprint. So go to the next slide. In 2013, KP Northwest developed the Community Health, or also we also call it the Community Resource Navigator Program. It's a non-clinical position, and it was originally designed to support our complex care and frail elderly patients, and work in partnership with our, care, our different care delivery teams and our social work care coordinators, et cetera. The position evolved over the years, and the scope of the work and the navigators there role in the care delivery system has also evolved. Um, you'll see in front of you, we have the key responsibilities, the employee background and training competencies. And those are, uh, this is the framework of um, who make up our navigator program. We currently have about 22 FTE dedicated to this work. And, <clears throat> excuse me, their primary responsibility has been to, to build relationships with community partners, build that database in our Health Connect system. Um, we use EPIC, we call it Health Connect. And um, to really perform the YCLS, so we use the assessment tool that, that we'll get to in just a minute, to ask our members questions and get to know them. And over time, our navigators have become a really key component of the care delivery team. Many of the navigators in our, in our team have uh, either a bachelor's or a graduate degree. They come from the community in which they're serving and they often speak more than one language. So really it, it's very much a community health worker type model, um, but with the navigators being in the, the health system, they're really navigating the broader health system with referrals out to the community. 
So all of our navigators have a pretty robust training they complete in the first three weeks. They do motivational interviewing, trauma-informed care, mental health first aid, financial health, and Medicaid application assistance for both um, Oregon and Washington so that it can better help our members on the front end. So if you go to the next slide. So this is a community event, just to give you a sense. They are often out in the community um, as their caseloads have grown. This unfortunately happens less often, but this has been a key part of building those relationships in the community and, and being a part of the, the nonprofit conversations and being able to direct people to the relationships and the different organizations that exist out in the community to support our members' social needs. Next slide. So as the Navigator program progressed, it really coincided with the understanding of social determinants of health within the healthcare system. And we really moved to try and manifest our own tools and our referral structure to support that understanding. So between 2016 and 18, KP Northwest specifically screened 7,688 members using this, this tool, the Your Current Life Situation tool. We made referrals to over um, 6,000 community agency referrals were made. And when we use this tool, the top needs that were identified included um, medical needs, so assistance with daily living activities, food, transportation, housing, and utility assistance. In 2016, in collaboration with the Care Management Institute, KP Northwest implemented this Your Current Life Situation tool, and we moved to standardize the model for assessing and addressing patient social needs. It, the team that made this, came up with this tool as a multidisciplinary team, included people from our operations, our clinical team, and research, and it was really focused and developed to highlight two things, so um, the, to document the social needs, and to um, document where referrals were being made. So with that, we um, had to build out some systems in our technology. So if we go to the next screen. So the technology allowed us to develop smart sets and the, the questions in the tool, um, we have nine specific questions that are asked consistently um, by navigators, social work, uh, care coordinators, but the navigator team were the only team through our technology where we had built out the community resource referrals. So really the data that, that KP Northwest has used as we're um, thinking about our social service resource locator as we've developed other positions have been based on the navigator referral data. Um, there are other questions. So although our current short form of the YCLS has nine questions, there are 21 total that were developed, vetted. Um, we're using them in other Kaiser Permanent Days throughout the country, so Colorado, um, I think Georgia. And that has really given us a, an idea about the consistency of the data and the needs throughout the country. So. Um, we are able in Health Connect to document using a smart set. We document our resource referral. And then that last piece, number three, around documenting the community resource summary progress note. So that idea is really about being able to capture, cat, catch and capture the referral that was made. And one of the things that we um, quickly identified and realized was the need for a better mechanism to, to do that referral we would often meet with members, they may have housing needs or our food needs, and we might make a phone call with them or give them a list with an address and phone number and um, expect and hope that they make it to those referrals, but we don't know. And so one of the next phases, so this is our future state, if you'll go to the next slide, um, we are looking to bring all of our different aspects of Kaiser Permanente and our community partnerships together. So using the social determinants of health as our driving factor. So do our members need food, housing, transportation, support with medical and legal issues that are impacting their health? Um, every aspect within social determinants of health, we are pulling staff from our community health department. Um, most People know that as community benefit 
um, or a granting arm of Kaiser Permanente to support our, our nonprofits and community resources. Our community-based organizations, our partners in the community, our KP members, and our clinical services. So we really, we're embracing all of those aspects. So really look at social determinants of health using our screening tool, the YCLS, and our documentation. We created a community clinic integrator role um, that's central to this and probably uh, use that for a different talk. And if you'll go to the next slide, good timing, um, to get to this, uh, which is our future state. So social service resource locator is a direction that Kaiser Permanente is moving um, with KP Northwest being an initial pilot site, but we expect this to be across um, all of Kaiser Permanente. And this tool is really to, to support both our members and our staff, but also our community partners to be able to know where um, someone who we, our staff, a navigator has referred out to the community, where they, did they make it? So it's a, a bi-directional closed loop referral opportunity um, that will be used by KP, but also shared throughout communities so that community partners and nonprofits can refer to each other to better support their, their work, their outcomes, and um, most importantly, our patients. So um, next slide. So as I mentioned, we had over 18,000 referrals. This is a quick summary. Um, we use ICD-10 codes to document the, the connection for the need for, for the social need. Our common, most common identified needs were medical, food, and transportation. Um, housing and utility assistance were in the top five, but um, we listed our top three. And our next step, and really we're, we're excited and anxiously awaiting the rollout of the social service resource locator um, to be able to do that work more efficiently and support our navigators and um, care delivery teams in that work. Last slide, I think is the takeaway. So our lessons learned. Um, and this is all really well documented in the, the um, information that you've received. Um, so step number one, it really has, you have to have leadership buy-in in order to, to move this work forward and set realistic expectations. I think um, particularly at Social Service Resource Locator is a great example. We, um, I started in May of last year and really thought we would hit the ground by June to be able to roll that out. And we are now not anticipating that to come until Q2 of, of 2019. And so it's taken us a year. We were um, very excited and ambitious, but we have to be realistic about you know, where things are with leadership making sure that our community and um, more sure the staff are aware of the community resources and that they, um, that that closed loop referral is gonna be key. So we can't just hand someone a phone number and have 500 lists in an organization. You really need a way to have a streamlined approach, which I'm sure you're gonna hear about in other presentations to support our patients and, and having them get the best care that they can. So with that, I will say thank you very much for the opportunity and pass back to Claire. Thanks so much, Kristen. Um, as I said, we are going to be holding Q&A until the end. However, if questions pop up in the meantime, please feel free to enter them to the chat box at the bottom of your screen, or you'll also see a little Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Now we're going to go ahead and hear from Sonia Tucker with La Maestra. Hi, thank you so much for uh, um, having me and uh, present a little bit of what we do here at La Maestra. Uh, you wanna go to the next slide, please? Okay, so let me just introduce you to who we are. So La Maestra Family Clinics is a federal qualified health center and we're located in beautiful San Diego, California. Uh, we operate five medical clinics, three school-based health centers, a mobile clinic that uh, provides medical and dental services, and about 10 dental um, clinics. Uh, also, uh, on 2018, La Maestra saw 48,545 lives, 69% of them uh, are medical or Medicaid for the ones that are not in California, Medicaid patients, um, 
And, uh, you know, they belong to one of the seven managed care plans that we have here in San Diego. Uh, here at La Maestra, we provide comprehensive, culturally and linguistically appropriate medical, dental, behavioral, and social, ser uh, social services through our circle of care. Uh, and I'm going to speak a little bit more about our circle of care. And we have a very diverse population. Um, most of them are immigrants, refugees, and uh, native-born residents, which most of them are at, at, at or below 100% the poverty level. So let me just introduce you also to our circle of care. Our circle of care is um, definitely the pride of La Maestra. Uh, this is how we provide services to our patients. This is how we make sure that um, we have social uh, justice that um, La Maestra really uh, strive for. So we started a little bit of history. We started as an amnesty center in 1986. So in our case, a little bit different than maybe than the rest of the presenters, we started as a social services ourselves. And then that's when we started as the um, need for medical services came um, to us. That's when we started giving medical, uh, medical services to the community. So since about 1990, La Maestra started providing um, services as La Maestra Circle of Care. La Maestra Circle of Care has been growing as the need for social services have been growing in the community. So um, even though La Maestra has the center uh, of the Circle of Care are the healthcare services, we also make sure that we have extended non-medical uh, services upstream and social services as needed. So this is very important for us because um, we need to make sure that we provide the services that our patients are needed. And a lot of those social services are provided within our four walls. If you wanna to go to the next slides, please. So La Maestra uh, Community Health Center has built in our own social services. And uh, you know, the question is, you know, how do we do that and what, uh, what are the processes? So we, that's when we realized that we needed to standardize a little bit the process of how we screen for those, uh, for those social services. So recently, we began to standardize the, the model that we already have in place, assessing, uh, by assessing the social services and um, making sure that we were documenting, tracking the data and making sure that we were closing the loop by the, by the loop referrals that we have, whether we're internal referrals or external referrals to social services outside of our four walls. Next one, please. So for that, we have, the, we have implemented uh, the social, uh, and I think a lot of you may have heard about this beautiful and very useful screening tool, which is a prepare a template. So what we did was we used the prepare a template as a base of how you uh, of how to make sure that we um, documented the social services that we were offering through the circle of care. So we use the prepare template uh, and customize it with the services that we provide um, through the circle of care. So the workflow a little bit about it was how how we did it. So the patient typically. Uh, get a hard copy when they are coming to our um, welcome desk or our registration um, services. And so why do we give them the hard copy so that they have the time to complete as much as they can instead of having a staff just asking them questions so they can think about it and there is a staff person present in case that they have a question just to guide them on you know, what, the what is the reason why we are asking these particular questions. And then the, the staff is in charge of inputting all this data into the electronic health records that will be generated into a non-available encounter that will be tasked to the provider that will be seeing this patient in the near future, whether that is in the same day or the next day. 
So once that is the, uh, that, that way the provider can emphasize what's important, but also what is different from what we were doing before to what we are doing now is that we had allowed these social services or the social um, employees, whether they were um, patient navigators, case managers, refer people uh, from the staff or registration person, to be able to place a referral to our internal referral process. So in the, in the past, we were only tasking the provider and the provider was the only person that was able to place a referral. We have moved on to give more tools to the ancillary staff to make sure that they're also available and able to make such referrals. Go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So this is a little customization that we did to our EHR. So as you guys can see, we utilize the prepare idea uh, in the prepare tool that NextGen is able to, has been able to provide to La Maestra. Nonetheless, what we decided to do was also put our little bit of uh, La Maestra flavor to it and add the areas that we found out the patient needed help with. So whether it was adult education, whether it was community garden, if the patient needed some information most, you know, about community garden, how do they plant their own garden, how they can be a little bit healthier, if they needed to go to the dental, food pantry. La Maestra per se, and in, the last, in the slides about um, the circle of care, we were able to see that we provide a lot of internal services here at La Maestra. One of those internal services our transitional housing, food pantry, health education, legal advocacy services, whether that is for uh, domestic violence or for um, immigration services, or I don't know if, how many of you guys know, but uh, San Diego has one of the uh, biggest uh, um, uh, human trafficking uh, areas. So we also provide services to that particular um, the particular population. We also have micro credit, micro enterprise, job training services, after school programs, summer programs, senior citizen programs, enrollment assistance, transportation, etc. I can go on and on and on and on. So once that is a once we identify or our staff, our ancillary staff is able to identify what area the patient needs uh, services for, there is an electronic track uh, that where we are able to track the status of the internal social services, then the referrals that we place through uh, NextGen. And also we are able, in case that we don't have any of the services or the services that the patient had, to say, that had said that they need help with, we leverage um, the different communications and the different uh, relationships that we have with the community. One that is very uh, well known here in San Diego is the 211 San Diego. So we leverage that uh, relationship and we are able to refer patients to get services either through 211 or directly through one of our um, local partners. Can you go to the next one, please? Perfect. So I wanted to kind of share a little bit of our success. And, you know, only in 2018, we assess about 2,500 patients here at La Maestra. And, uh, you know, the three most prevalent needs here were medical care, uh, health insurance information, and food services. Within the food services, we were able to find that we had two areas that were, uh, that our patients were saying that they needed information was how to uh, how to access our food pantry and um, the food stamp program so whatever that's called in your area and then we were able to uh, link those patients to somebody that would be able to help them and assessing and fill the um, the forms that they're needed for the food pro the, the food program through the county so challenges, I think, uh, you know, our last presenter, thankfully she comes from, uh, she was from Kaiser, a little bit different funding, but for us community health centers, funding is always a challenge because all those services is a lot of um, efforts that we put into there, but we do not have the opportunity to get reimbursed for any of that. Nonetheless, we're not gonna stop doing it because this is the right thing to do. And that's what we stand for here at La Maestra. We make sure that our patients are well taken care of. Um, the next steps is uh, we are definitely developing a marketing campaign because we need to make 
sure that we somehow have enough funding to keep funding what we're doing or to keep paying for what uh, the social services are. Uh, something that falls very near to my department and is part of what I do is we need to make sure that we're analyzing the data in a correct way. Now that we have a good idea on how and a good way on how to, um, we have standardized the, the process, we're able to get more clean data and analyze it and get better results. And obviously working very closely with partners like 211 in San Diego and the community uh, health information exchange and leverage the technology that we have in order for us to be able to serve the patients and meet the patients where they need, uh, where, I mean, where they are and meet the needs that they have at this point. Um, that's what I have. So I give back to you guys. Thank you so much, Sonia. We'll pass the prisoner privileges right over to CBC IPA. Hi, my name is Elise Cole Grant. I'm Director of IT Projects at Coordinated Behavioral Care, and I'm with Asia Evans, who's Director of Innovative Programs at CBC. So we're going to give a quick overview of kind of how we develop the platform for integrated care delivery and talk about the community directory and the closed loop referral system that we've implemented. So just to provide a quick background of who CBC is, Coordinated Behavioral Care, CBC, is a member-led organization consisting of a health home and independent practice association. And we've just recently launched our Innovations Hub, which really incubates new program models and leverages new emerging technologies. Um, what's really unique about CBC is we have a targeted focus on the social determinants of health and what I mean by that is the education that a patient receives or has access to, the transportation they have access to, their economic status, um, their environment and their physical environment as well as kind of their own sort of mental health needs and we really drive services into the community to hopefully reduce hospital visits and really to cater to services that can meet the patient's needs where the patient is. We represent a population of about 100,000 Medicaid lives and these lives represent the LGBTQ community, victims of domestic violence, um, individuals who suffer from serious mental illness or substance use, as well as children without homes and adults who you know, are in and out of homeless shelters. So if you can go to the next slide, we're a very large network. We have 16 founding member organizations, which you see below, and they're really our board members, and they're the organizations that we have very tight relationships to that provide direct services to the patients that we serve, as well as we have a larger network of agencies to make sure that we specifically cover the exact needs of our patients. Again, driving from anywhere from education to counseling to substance use treatment to housing um, and clinical treatment. You can go to the next slide. We have, uh, like I said, we have a diverse amount of programs that are really scattered throughout New York City. Now you might see some acronyms here that you might not be familiar with, but kind of as you see going from the top down is we have more than 100 mental health clinics. We have more than 35 substance use disorder clinics. And these clinics and programs are really scattered through and positioned in the boroughs and the zip codes that are really heavily needed for these types of programs. Um, going down all the way to the bottom is New York City. We have a big housing crisis, right, especially during the winter season. So um, throughout our whole network, we have over 8,000 housing beds and supportive services and almost 2,000 shelter beds and a little over 1,000 um, healthcare practitioners. So within sort of the behavioral health services and community-based services that we provide. We also are mixed in with some physical health providers that can meet sort of the medical needs of our patients. Um, next slide. So in order to really ensure that we're providing the services that um, our patients need, is we came with a three pillar approach in terms of technology. So the first pillar is a central database. The second pillar is a contact tracking and closed loop referral system. And then the third pillar is really having a data analytic business intelligence platform that can support us in running analytics across our patient population. 
population. So starting with the first pillar is having that central database. I mean, like I said before, we are a very large organization that represents over 55 individual organizations that have their own patients that have their own marketing techniques that have their own sort of zip code or borough or location that they cover is services update all the time so in order to kind of understand and in order to develop a directory of services we needed to have that central database and standardize the services that we provide and the type of treatment we provide so with that i mean most folks know that in sort of the behavioral health and community-based space is we really lack standardization um, different from kind of the physical health space where they have billing codes associated to every individual service, you know, the behavioral health and community-based organizations really don't have that. So we've had to develop our own taxonomy, which led us to partnering with Healthify, where we've worked with them to have sort of a standardized structure in terms of the type of categories that our services fall under and the type of needs that they meet and the populations that they serve. So going down, that leads us to pillar two, is to have that contact and closed loop referral system. Since we had such a big network, uh, we realized that it was getting more and more burdensome to keep an internal directory of our service programs, the phone numbers, the individual staff that could outreach to um, our patient population. And so that in order to maintain the quality of care coordination that we want is we needed a partner like Healthify to maintain and update uh, those phone numbers, those addresses, those program service changes, and the titles and the categories to ensure that we could provide the quality service that we want to for our patient population. And then going down to the third pillar, which I, I really kind of just touch on briefly, is overall having a data analytic and business intelligence platform where Healthify feeds into to allow us to run analytics across our patient population and able to provide a platform so that we can begin testing and piloting user-facing apps with our patient population. Next slide. Great, so going into really Healthify and honing in here is Healthify is broken down into what we call two different features, is we have the search feature and the coordinate feature. The search feature is what I discussed about earlier, which is really having a directory of services. Imagine the yellow pages except in the cloud, right? That's updated on a real-time basis. Is the picture is a little small here, but as a service provider, I would go in and I would search for what I need. And down below, again, sorry for folks who can't really see it, is you have behavioral health, you have housing, you have food, you have shelter. So um, let's say that, for instance, a couple months ago when the government was shut down. There was a huge issue in how that might affect the SNAP benefits, which is the um, food stamps that are provided to our patients. And so that way we directed our care team to look in Healthify for food pantries and other resources around the area that they lived in where they could go and um, find free food. Another example is it gets really, really cold in New York City. And so if individuals don't have housing or don't have, um, you know, or if the, a shelter is full, in Healthify, you can look for warming shelters that are available and that are open. So we've made it easy for our provider organizations to search within our network and search outside of our network as well if they can't find something within the network. Um, down to the second feature, which is the coordinate feature, which is really that closed loop referral process. So, you know, above and beyond the search feature is we do want to track those referrals that go, you know, within our no own network and also outside of our own network. So um, providers have the opportunity to <clears throat> fill out a referral for an individual and the site on the other side that's receiving that referral can then flag that referral and indicate whether or not they've met with that individual. And I'll let Asia kind of talk about the next slide, which goes into a little overview of sort of the detail of how the referral process model works. 
Um, hello, everyone. So because we're a behavioral health network, a lot of what we're doing is related to the needs of the participants or members that we're serving. So this is going to happen across the board with either the health home or any of the CBC innovative programs that we have um, going on currently. So in the beginning, after somebody is identified or enrolled in a certain program, they would have an assessment. So they have an initial comprehensive assessment. And again, because we're a behavioral health network, a lot of that happens um, within the agency itself or within that particular program. So there's a standardized tool that that program would utilize to identify the needs. And we've been doing this in addition to not just figuring out what that member needs, but what services can apply to it, as well as um, figuring out what our goals are going to be in their care plan moving forward. So when we utilize that, we're able to bring in Healthify once we're identified those needs with the comprehensive assessment to then go and Healthify and see where we can find those services in their location, um, utilizing the platform to do whether it's a five mile radius, 10 mile radius, making sure that there's transportation or figuring out troubleshooting how we're gonna get our clients and members to those locations. But the comprehensive assessment allows us to figure out what those needs actually are. Now, a lot of the people we serve do have social needs. Um, it's pretty rare that somebody wouldn't have, would have a service that didn't need anything. Um, but if they don't, then they don't, and that's okay too. It's about helping them and meeting the client where they're at, as Elise was saying before. But if they do identify what their needs are, we're able to go into Healthify and either through search, identifying what the program or services that they need, where they're located, how to get there, what their hours of operation are, as well as contacting the certain service. And then with the closed loop referral, if an agency's enrolled in that, we're able to actually go in, make the referral to the agency through Healthify, and then have a communication back and forth to the two, the two different providers um, with the service. Usually this is a um, provider facing platform, so it's either gonna be clinicians or case managers or care coordinators who are utilizing Healthify to either do the search and make the referral or be with the client when they're actually making the phone call. What's really fantastic with the closed loop referral on Healthify is that we get that extra follow up. Um, if they went through the system, put in the referral, they're able to get an appointment and then they're able to find out that the client actually went to that appointment, which closes the loop and makes sure that everybody's involved in coordinating together and collaborating on the care for this individual. So the results to date are right now we have about 28 network organizations on board and, and trained in Healthify. We're seeing about 700 searches per month and those are searches for you know the community resources available in Healthify. Some of the top searches has really been food and housing we've seen consistently month by month. In terms of the coordinate that close with referral uh, feature. We have two network organizations pilot testing the closed loop referral function now, and we anticipate six more additional organizations to be on boarded within this year. The next steps, and I guess you could say uh, the challenges really, is continue to drive engagement. One thing I can't say over and over again is especially working with organizations that sort of have their own priorities, is keeping them in touch and active throughout this entire process of engaging and updating and reminding them to utilize the platform and really empowering them as users to take advantage of this platform and to spread the closed loop referral function across our network organizations. Um, and last but not least is now we're on to another phase, which is implementing our data analytics business intelligence platform, which will really um, use Healthify as one of the main data sources to pool information. And thank you so much for letting us kind of present and provide an overview. Thank you. Thank you, it's really exciting stuff. So we're going to go ahead and pass this on to our final presenters from SCAN Health Plan. Can you guys hear me okay? I've had uh, microphone problems all day. Sounds great. Hello? Hi, we can hear you. 
Well, I hope that you guys can hear me. Um, this is Magda Lenardowitz. I am a medical director at Scan Health Plan, and um, Natalie couldn't be here um, on this call today, so um, I will try to muddle my way through this. Oh, good, you can hear me. Thank you, Claire. Um, next slide, please. So um, Scan Health Plan is essentially a Medicare Advantage HMO um, here in California. Uh, we also contract with the California Department of Healthcare Services to provide services to our duly eligible members. We are um, the only FIDA SNP um, in the state, meaning that we provide um, fully integrated uh, dual eligible um, services, both Medi-Cal um, and uh, Medicare services to a section, portion of our members. We cover about 200,000, over a little over 200,000 members in 10 counties. Um, we actually, funnily enough, did start as a social service organization in 1977. We were the first multi-purpose senior services program site, one of the first multi-purpose senior services program sites uh, for low-income and chronically ill seniors. So we've been doing something around social determinants of health and supporting um, those more frail members um, for quite a long time. And in 2008, we added um, some special needs plans specific to folks, again, who qualify for both Medicaid and Medicare. Um, we also do have a partner organization that's part of us called Independence at Home, which provides a lot of the care management um, and support to seniors and their caregivers. They are not plan members. This is for anybody in our community. Next uh, slide, please. So our social needs screening has changed over the years uh, based on sort of the changing structure of, of our organization. Um, I think the one that is most important is the recent HRA or Health Risk Assessment um, Initiative. Uh, we've had um, HRAs done for our SNP or dual population for some time, but in 2018, um, we incorporated a social needs question screen into the broader HRE for all, meaning that all our members um, will be, have been and will be um, assessed for a variety of issues, including housing insecurity, food insecurity, transportation issues, health literacy, um, and so on. Uh, they're all now assessed um, when they're enrolled into the plan and we hope to reassess them annually to see how things change um, over time. Next slide, please. Now, um, Natalie is my go-to person for Aunt Bertha, so I hope that I can um, do this justice, but um, the resource we have decided to use is because um, we are not like Kaiser, so we're not an integrated, um, sort of direct care delivery provider. Um, we are a, a payer who contracts with medical groups across uh, Southern and Northern California um, who are our delegates. So they provide the direct care. So one of our challenges has been trying to figure out how to integrate um, the social determinants of health and how to integrate the social um, issues information in such a way that it is accessible to our medical groups which have very very you know emrs varied um ways of doing things on their own um so we have partnered with a vendor called aunt bursa and this is an online community resource directory um, and referral platform um, it's very interactive and it allows both our members um, our staff and any organizations that we work with, our medical groups, to interact with this um, on a, you know, as, as they need. Um, can you go on to the next slide, please? Um, okay, I'll, I'll continue with this. So the um, there's a member-facing site called our Community Connection site. Um, it allows our members and their caregivers, friends, family, whoever, to search for a listings on their own. Um, they're able to save listings they like. They can develop a personal library of things. Um, and these are available through the Community Connections link on the SCAN website. Um, our own staff um, is able to access an internal version of this um, community resource to look for referrals for our um, members when they're looking for a specific program. And they can track the progress of the referral between the program and the member. Um, and then our providers, our community organizations, also have the ability to be involved with Aunt Bertha um, as, as they would. 
um, and they can list their programs and organizations and offerings on Aunt Versa um, so they can claim their listing. So we are trying to integrate um, all our local partner organizations, community organizations into the service. Now, um, I think we had this maybe a little bit backward, but um, our, um, you know, the key folks that are involved in this project are our care navigators. Um, they are some of the folks that assess um, our members for their medical and social needs using the health risk assessment. Um, they input all that data into the scans internal system. Um, and they do work very hard to refer high risk or complex folks or just folks who need the services to the appropriate care team. Um, we do have care management team members who are nurses and social workers. Um, they certainly deal with a lot of the urgent um, as well as the non-urgent medical and social referrals. And they, again, use the Aunt Bertha community resource uh, within internally to help our members find um, resources they need. Um, and then we have um, project managers. These are folks who can be clinical or non, um, who do lead the internal social needs screening and referral programs at SCAN because we do have some homegrown programs as well. They make sure everything is running smoothly. So that's kind of how everybody connects. Next slide, please. Um, up to now, we've screened about 16,000 members for social needs using that HRA for all. Um, we've had quite a few searches for different social service and community programs using Aunt Bertha. And our top three um, needs are, at this point, housing assistance, uh, veteran, veterans assistance, and um, folks looking for adult care. Most of our population, a large number of our population are older adults. That's our focus. Um, so there is a lot of um, interest in, you know, um, day programs um, and other services that can help our senior organizations that can help our, our seniors. Um, so that's pretty much it. I think the biggest um, issue for us is uh, what some of the presenters did mention is closing the loop. Currently, as it stands, our, our uh, platform um, doesn't necessarily allow us to do that and so you know the the plan for this year is try to figure out how we can close the loop and how to make sure what some of these wonderful other organizations are doing um, to make sure that when we send out that referral the member actually gets the referral and something happens there's some kind of follow-up because um, again we'd like to be the loop closer and we'd like to make sure that if we refer someone they actually get those um, get those uh, supports and that's pretty much it Thank you so much, Magda. So we've got a few minutes left to take questions. I do believe everyone on the line is muted. So if you have questions, again, you'll want to chat them in through the chat box. If you hover over the screen um, on, on, in the center bottom, there's a little chat function. There's also a Q&A function. Either of those should get to us. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions yet. Rebecca Marie, are you getting anything? Nope, we don't see any questions either. All right, we'll give you guys a few more minutes. Um, in the meantime, I did want to point out, if you open up your chat box, Rebecca has included a link to all four in-depth case studies. When you look at the individual case studies um, and scroll all the way to the bottom, there are links to the different documents referenced during these presentations. So for example, if you want, you could download Kaiser's um, Your Current Life Situation tool. You could download a copy of the Prepare tool. I think each organization has uploaded anywhere from three to five tools um, that are accessible to the public for download. All right, we just got a great question in. How were these organizations selected for this project? So um, 
RCHC was hired to conduct this project, and in order to identify these different programs and organizations, we conducted internet research, literature reviews, and then we also reached out directly to CIN members to see if they had any suggestions for groups that they would really be interested in learning more about and spotlighting. And that's how these organizations um, were all chosen. Okay, well, if there aren't any more questions, I think we can wrap it up. I do want to thank you all for joining us today and give a huge thanks to those who presented on their programs. I believe Maria is going to post a final poll question. This is an anonymous question. It's just to help CIN understand if the content they're providing is useful to your quality improvement efforts. All right, great. I see it's posted. And Maria, is there anything else you want to say to clo close us out today? Yes, uh, I just wanted to remind everybody on the call that this webinar was recorded and will be posted on our website. Uh, please feel free to share it widely among your networks. Uh, we also have other upcoming technical assistance uh, events. Um, you can go to our website at www.chcf.org slash CIN. A uh, huge thank you to all of our presenters today, as well as all those who attended on our call. Have a great day, everyone.